the Armed Forces of the Philippines, or AFP, apologizes for releasing a list that wrongfully red tags several alumni of the University of the Philippines, or UP. The apology comes from a Facebook post published by the AFP Civil Military Operations Office, or J7. It says it launched an internal investigation Sunday, January 24, and the personnel responsible will be held accountable. Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana earlier called the mistake unpardonable. The military released the names of 27 people without proper vetting, putting their lives in danger amid a government crackdown on communists. Some alumni whose names are in the list are also considering filing a cyber libel complaint. UP Diliman Chancellor Fidel Nemenzo condemns the red tagging, saying it is unthinkable that despite the millions of military funds, the AFP is making such baseless accusations. Meantime, four of the Philippines' top universities also denounced the latest red tagging effort against them by the spokesperson of the task force against local communists. In a joint statement, leaders of the Ateneo de Manila University, De La Salle University, Far Eastern University, and University of Santo Tomas slammed Lieutenant General Antonio Parlade Jr. Parlade tagged the school Saturday as among 18 schools that he claims are recruitment havens for the New People's Army. The four schools say they value the Filipinos' basic constitutional rights of speech, thought, assembly, and organization. The DOH approves the coronavirus saliva testing of the Philippine Red Cross or PRC starting Monday, January 25. The test is priced at 2,000 pesos, which is 1,800 pesos cheaper than a swab test. PRC Chairman Senator Richard Gordon says individuals can now avail of the test by booking an appointment in the PRC website. The service is limited only to its laboratory in its Mandaluyong City headquarters and its molecular laboratory in Port Area, Manila. Gordon says individuals who will undergo the test should not eat, drink, gargle, smoke, or vape 30 minutes before the test. PRC Biomolecular Laboratory's chief, Pauline Ubial, says PRC's initial saliva-based testing yields at 98.11% accuracy. Unlike the RT-PCR test, which has a turnaround time of 24 hours, processing time of the saliva test will only take 3 to 4 hours. Meantime, the Health Department, or DOH, says it identified a total of 144 close contacts of the 12 cases that tested positive for the new COVID-19 variant in Bontoc Mountain Province. Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergere says Monday, of the 144 close contacts, 116 are tested for the virus and 42 yield positive results. President Rodrigo Duterte promises to prioritize the families of soldiers in the government's COVID-19 vaccination program. Duterte makes the pledge during a visit to Holo Sulu Friday, January 22, weeks after his own security group was embroiled in a controversy for vaccinating themselves ahead of other priority sectors. And uh, uh, if uh, the Secretary Galvez would say to yes. Sali na yung pamilya ninyo. Uh, magpunta yung mag-inject sa mga kampo, turukan pati yung mga anak ninyo. So ito lahat libre ito. Presidential spokesperson Hari Roque on Monday, January 25, says Duterte is likely referring to families of roughly 140,000 members of the military. But families of soldiers are not in the government's list of sectors prioritized for receiving COVID-19 vaccines. Soldiers and other uninformed personnel are fifth in line after health and government frontliners, elderly, and the poor. Huwag naman po kayo mag-alala kasi sa ating initial list, 24 million ang ating babakunahan. No? If at all, siguro madadagdagan po ito ng uh, mga 2 million if there are three members of uh, uh, family of the um, men in uniform. No? At uh, sobra-sobra naman po yung inaasahan na nating dadating na bakuna by the second uh, or third quarter of the year. Roque sidesteps when asked by Rappler if Malacanang thinks families of soldiers deserve priority slots over persons with comorbidities who are deemed vulnerable to COVID-19. The World Health Organization identifies those with heart or lung disease, diabetes, or conditions affecting their immune system as high risk. Roque says the proposal was not approved because some people in the pandemic task force said it could be an easy way for people to skip the line. The Biden administration and Democratic and Republican lawmakers agree on Sunday, January 24, the most important priority should be producing and efficiently distributing a vaccine. This comes as they discuss a new $1.9 trillion for coronavirus relief. White House Principal Deputy Press Secretary Karin Jean-Pierre tells reporters, quote, We can't wait. Just because Washington has been gridlocked before doesn't mean it needs to continue to be gridlocked. 
The pandemic killed more than 417,000 Americans, threw millions out of work, and is infecting more than 175,000 Americans a day. U.S. President Joe Biden earlier reiterated they are in a national emergency and they need to act like they're in one. Biden's predecessor, President Donald Trump, was known to downplay the situation. White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain reveals Sunday there was no plan in place for distributing the vaccine to millions of Americans when Biden took over. A military-owned Facebook page names 27 people who are supposedly graduates of the University of the Philippines who became members of the Communist New People's Army and were quote-unquote dead or captured. This claim is false. The list was posted on the Armed Forces of the Philippines Information Exchange Facebook page on Friday evening, January 22. At least eight names on the list are journalists, former government officials, lawyers, teachers, or entertainment personalities. They are still alive and have not been captured as members of the NPA. There are also no official reports or proof that these people were ever members of the NPA. Several other pages that also posted the list identified themselves as connected to the armed forces of the Philippines. The page Conservatives of the Philippines also shared the list, but it does not identify itself as connected to the military. Last Sunday, January 24, the military apologized for the list and called it inconsistencies. 